that and oppress that and inflict punishment on others and judge in a brutal way and still think, well, I still have wisdom. Yes, native wisdom. You remember when Solomon died and his son came to the throne. They came to the son. They said, please, your father is gone. When your father was on earth, he really tormented us. He put the yoke upon us, heavy load upon us, and he couldn't talk because that man did it in his native wisdom. But the Lord is asking us that we shouldn't operate in native wisdom. We should have the wisdom from above so that we can do a work for the Lord that is profitable for you and profitable to God and profitable to our fellow man. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the wealth of wisdom. Higher than neighbors wisdom there are kinds of wisdom that neighbors have and neighbors have uh, natural wisdom and neighbors have human wisdom and neighbors have native wisdom but we as Christians as we come to the Lord the Lord is asking us to come and ask him for a kind of wisdom that is higher than that of our neighbors. We're looking at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6. It says, keep therefore and do them. That's the word of God. That's the commandment of God for this is your wisdom. The Bible. This is your wisdom. The commandments of God. This is your wisdom. The sayings of Christ. This is your wisdom. The exhortation in the epistles. This is your wisdom. We have the Bible. We have the word of Christ. We have the exhortation of the Lord that our neighbors do not have. Maybe they have the Bible, but they don't have the spirit of truth that will guide them into all truth. We have what our neighbors do not have, and the wealth of wisdom higher than our neighbors' wisdom were to preach in that. That's why we pray. They don't have to pray anything they want to do. They just recollect when this happened the other time. That's the way I handled it. When that happened to that man, that's the way he handled it. All they can do is to have, I mean, our neighbors is to have the natural native wisdom. But we, we have access to the word of God. We have access to the wisdom of the scriptures. And we pray and we'll preach in that kind of wisdom. It says, keep their form and, and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations of the nation that surround you of the people that surround you which shall hear all these statues and say surely this great nation is a wise and uh, understanding people a wise and uh, understanding uh, people it's with that wisdom we build our lives it's with that wisdom we build the church it's with that wisdom we build our home our home our home you see all of us we have neighbors not only neighbors we have parents and we see how our parents ruled their families guided their families operated in their families and you know if you are like me you will know that the wisdom of our parents in building the home and building their household their wisdom was limited they could only refer to the proverbs of the nation or to the practices of the nation or practices of other people. And most of our parents did not make it. They didn't make it in the natural neighbor's wisdom. But we now come and thank God we're born again. Thank God we're saved. Thank God we're children of God. And thank God we have the Bible, the scriptures. Thank God we have the spirit that helps us to understand the interpretation of the word of God. And with that wisdom, higher wisdom, 
with that wisdom, brighter wisdom, with that wisdom, deeper wisdom, revealed by the word of God, we build our lives, we build our families, we build our household. We don't say that the way my daddy dealt with my mother, and that's what I'll do. Uh, uh, that, that one is a lower kind of wisdom. Come up, come up higher. If any of you lack wisdom, Wisdom to build your home and wisdom to build your life and wisdom to build the church. Let him ask of God and you come asking without wavering. Proverbs chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 1. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, every wise woman buildeth her house. Every wise woman buildeth a house. If you're a wife, you need wisdom to build the home, to build your family, to build the household. And it's not just the native wisdom. It's not just the natural wisdom. It's not the wisdom you acquired from your mom, from your dad. You need wisdom greater than that wisdom, the wisdom that comes from the Spirit of God and from the Scripture. Every wise woman Buildeth her house, but the foolish plucked it down with her hands. We're looking at uh, chapter 31 of Proverbs, and we're looking at verse 26. 31, verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom. You're building a family, she opens her mouth with wisdom. You are a man, you're building your family, he opens his mouth with wisdom. You're building a company, you're building the workers, and you're building people that will help you project your vision, achieve your vision. He opens his mouth with wisdom. You're building on the mission and the vision that the Lord has given you. You're a man, you're a woman. We need the wisdom from above. And the way you open your mouth, the way you talk and the things you say, he, she, opens her mouth, his mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, we're looking at praying for wisdom from the Lord. If it's coming from the Lord, we need to pray. If we're asking for the wisdom from the Lord, we need to pray. That's why it says in James chapter 1, reading from verse 5. James chapter 1 verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, and we do, and we do. If any of you lack wisdom, you may not lack wisdom for human enterprise, but when it comes to spiritual enterprise, Surprise, we lack wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom as a single man, single lady, maybe you have the wisdom to keep yourself, comport yourself, and go through life with all the shades and meanings of the things we go through. But when it comes to you now have a family, we need wisdom higher than the wisdom we ever had. If any of you lack wisdom, maybe as a believer, as a child of God, you live your life in righteousness and holiness before him all the days of your life. Now you become a minister. Now you become a leader. You need the wisdom you didn't have when you were just an ordinary member of the church. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, but let him ask in faith. Let him pray in faith. Nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven and toss. Well, we're coming to this under three subtitles. Number one, there's a search for wisdom in the world. Search for wisdom 
in the world. Any leader that comes up in any community, in any country, and they want to, you know, build uh, a people around them that will help them fulfill their mission, their vision, uh, to govern very well. They look for people, they search for people that have wisdom that will support them, that will lift them up, and that will uphold the vision they have. And there is a search, and that's not just people in the world, those in the church too, the people who belong to the Lord, to we search for wisdom as we live in this world. There's so many pitfalls, there's so many pitfalls, there are uh, portals, there are so many dangers and difficulties that if we do not have the wisdom, we'll just be falling and rising, falling and rising into those situations in the world. That is how the world is. But we search for wisdom while we live in this world. Number two is the supplication for wisdom without wavering. When we come to the Lord, we know, of course, we need wisdom. Wisdom to do what we have never done and wisdom to tread the path, the path of holiness, the path of righteousness. And we come to us knowing that the Lord will give unto to us because we're making supplication for the wisdom without wavering. Number three is the supremacy of his wisdom above the worldliness. The supremacy of his wisdom above the worldliness. The worldliness are the people in the world. They may have great names. They may have exalted names. They may have the names that are very popular. They're still in the world all the same. They are worldlings. And we need wisdom supreme, higher, greater than those people who are in the world. The supremacy of his wisdom, of God's own wisdom, above the worldlings. Look at number one. Number one is the search for wisdom in the world. In uh, Job chapter 28, reading from verse 12. Job 28 verse 12, but where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? It's a search. It's a search. I'm searching for wisdom that I'll do all things in a way that will bring forth the desired outcome, the desired fruit in every area of my life. And without the wisdom from above, how can I have that? And now I'm searching, I'm searching. Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Verse 13, in verse 13, man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living, that is, in the world, anywhere you search, north, east, west, south, anywhere you search, up there, down there, it says, neither is it found in the land of the living. Obviously then, this is not natural wisdom. Obviously then, uh, this is not native wisdom. Obviously then, this is not our neighbor's wisdom. Because all those neighbors, all those natural people, they are in the land of the living. We are asking for the wisdom. We are searching for the wisdom that comes from above. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, the devil says, it is not in me. And the sea says, it is not in me. Verse 15, in verse 15, it says, it cannot be gotten for gold. It's not something you have enough currency to buy. You can buy books, you can buy tapes, you can buy whatever, but the wisdom is not there. The kind of wisdom we're asking for, you cannot buy with money. And then it says, not be wage uh, for, the, for the price thereof. In verse 16, in verse 16, it says, it cannot be valued with the gold of offer and with the precious onyx or the sapphire. Verse 17, the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not 
be for jewels of gold. Verse 18, in verse 18, no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls. Or for the price of wisdom is above rubies. It's above what you can earn by money, what you can earn by butter, uh, by trade and butter, by exchanging what you have of the currency of the world with this kind of wisdom that we're talking about. You cannot buy anything from heaven with money, salvation, holiness, righteousness, wisdom, and the life, the new life we live. You cannot buy that with any currency on earth. In verse 19, it says in verse 19, the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Verse 20, in verse 20, it says, whence then cometh wisdom? Whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding look at verse 28 in verse 28 it says and unto man he said behold the fear of the lord that is wisdom the fear of the lord is wisdom the fear of the lord is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding that the kind of wisdom he wants us to have the, the the wisdom that fears the lord that believes the word of god that knows that without salvation we're separated from god and we cannot please god and therefore a moment a definite day comes in your life you make up your mind you take a decision you fear the lord you fear the word of the lord you fear the coming judgment you repent of your sin and you call upon upon the Lord and you have a definite experience of salvation and you have the grace of God in your life that makes you now to live in his wisdom and to walk in his wisdom it tells us in first Corinthians chapter 1 reading from verse 22 first Corinthians chapter 1 reading from verse 22 for the Jew require a sign and the Greeks the Gentiles seek after wisdom seek after wisdom searching for wisdom verse 23 in verse 23 it tells us but we preach Christ Christ crucified unto the Jews his stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness verse 24 in verse 24 but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God Christ a savior in the wisdom of God Christ a sanctifier in the wisdom of God Christ the one that enables us to live and to walk in the fear of God in the understanding of what he requires Christ is the wisdom of God look at verse 30 in verse 30 and of but of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom unto us wisdom if somebody does not have Christ as Savior Christ living on the inside of him he might have natural wisdom native wisdom earthly wisdom he does not have the wisdom that takes us to heaven the wisdom that makes a way for us and to go through all the trials of the temptations of the world and to get to heaven eventually christ jesus is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption look at number two number two here is the supplication for wisdom without wavering the supplication for wisdom without wavering it tells us in james chapter 1 verse 5 again if any of you lack wisdom now we know if we don't have christ we lack wisdom 
Now we know if we don't have salvation, we lack a special kind of wisdom. Now we know if we do not know how to transmit and translate what we reach in the world into our heart so that our hearts are transformed. Our hearts are changed and we walk as new creatures in Christ. If we don't have the wisdom to transfer and transmit the word into our lives, we lack a real serious wisdom. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. We have to have time to pray and to ask of God. Just listening to the Bible, just listening to the study, that's not enough. But we ask the Lord, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given him. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven and uh, us. We're looking at Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 15. Luke chapter 21, verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. I will give you. That means those disciples who had been following after the Lord, they didn't have this yet, but he said, I will give them. That means those of us who have been following the Lord, I'm saved, I'm born again, praise the Lord. I'm sure my name is in the book of life. Yes, he told them, rejoice not because the spirits are subject unto you. But rejoice because your names are written in heaven. These are the people from chapter 10. He had told them their names were written in heaven. Yet he said, there's something you lack, I will give unto you. There's something you lack you still have to pray for. There's something you lack and you still have to seek the face of the Lord and I will give you your mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain say or receive. We have adversaries. We have persecutors. We have the people that want to stop our journey. We have the people that want to a kind of a dilute, minimize or diminish a commitment on our way to heaven. And if you do not have the wisdom beyond I am saved, I am born again, you will not be able to resist them effectively. But he says as on your way to heaven and you're confronted by all these things that come against your life wanting to stop you, wanting to hinder you, wanting to diminish your commitment to get into heaven. He says, I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all, all of them, no exception, all of them put together, whoever they are, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, or receive. Look at number three here. Number three, the supremacy of his wisdom above the worldlings, the supremacy of his wisdom, is wisdom in us. It's wisdom flowing through us. It's wisdom operating in us. It's wisdom looking at all the things happening in the world all around you. The wisdom to still remain steadfast, solid, and stable. In spite or despite all those things that may be around you. The wisdom that is supreme beyond the wisdom of the world lives. We're coming to Colossians chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 3. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him, in Christ, is hidden all the wisdom that you can have supreme, supernatural. The treasures, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, Beware, lest any man spoil you, beguile you, destroy you, deceive you, 
uh, through the philosophy and the deceit, being deceived, and the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. In our lives, we'll come across, uh, you know, people, some of them, uh, they can quote the Bible like parrots. They're not born again. They're not born again. They're not children of God. They do not know how to live the victorious life, but they can quote the Bible like parrots. And they can misquote the Bible a lot and a number of times. And if you do not have the wisdom of God, they can derail you. They can destabilize you and they can destroy the faith you have. That's why it says in Christ we have all the treasures of wisdom and all the treasures of knowledge and understanding. And you don't want people who may be able to quote the Bible, even Satan quoted the Bible to the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus had that supremacy of wisdom that was able to stop him, able to resist him, not just somebody quoting the Bible, quoting the Bible, and the Bible doesn't have any kind of cleansing effect in their lives. Look at verse nine in verse nine for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily in christ our savior in christ our sanctifier in christ our sustainer in christ our baptizer in the holy ghost in christ the one that holds us up who is able to hold up all things in the universe and we're kept in the power of the spirit of god in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily in verse 10 it says and ye are complete in him. You don't have to go into the depths of Satan to find wisdom. We don't have to go to the riverside to find wisdom. We don't have to go to the books of a people who deal with what they call secret knowledge to get a wisdom. It says she are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and Power. And as you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 14, it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou has learnt them. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. That's real wisdom. That's real wisdom. Wise unto salvation. What the need, what the use, what the benefit of wisdom. That doesn't make somebody wise unto salvation. What's the benefit of wisdom that makes somebody wise unto hypocrisy, wise unto covering up, wise unto being crafty, wise unto being deceptive, wise unto pretending that he's a child of God and he's not a child of God. What's the wisdom in hiding someone and nobody will ever know? And he says, I have wisdom. I have wisdom. I can deceive without their ever telling. I can lie without their ever finding out. He has wisdom. He can remain a child of the devil without anybody ever telling that he's a child of the devil. What's, what's the wisdom in that? And what's the benefit of that? But when we have the wisdom of the scriptures that leads us to repentance, that leads us to faith in Christ, that leads us to having genuine salvation, a life-transforming salvation, and we'll walk in that wisdom of God, and we're wise unto salvation. 
that the greatest kind of wisdom we can possess and operate in. He says, and that from a child that was known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus. We are coming to point number three. Point number three, we're looking at possessing his wisdom in our lives. It's one thing to read it in the book that you come to your life. It's one thing to find it in a fellow believer, in a fellow minister, let it come into your own life. It's, it's one thing to have it in the head, let it come to your heart, and you live by that wisdom that makes you to live the life of a sick soul, the life of a purified, sanctified spirit. It tells us once again in James chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 5. James chapter 1, reading from verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. If anyone so called a believer, if he lives a foolish life, if he lives in folly, if he lives in an unwise manner, if he speaks in an unwise manner, if he acts in an unwise manner, and obviously everybody can tell that man, the member of a church, lacks wisdom. He doesn't have the wisdom to live a consistent, victorious life. Look at this woman. This woman, obviously, she lacks wisdom. She doesn't have the wisdom to live a triumphant, righteous, victorious life. Look at that pastor. This pastor, obviously, the way he talks and the way he acts, Acts, and the way he approaches people and the way he approaches problem look at this pastor he doesn't have the wisdom to live and to minister he has not prayed because it says if we pray he will give you the wisdom and he will give liberally and your bread is not if somebody has been acting like a foolish person an unwise person all these past years and we're hoping that there'll be a change there'll be transformation. He'll come to a higher level of living, higher level of doing things, but we we'll still find that the same foolishness of the past, the same wise ways of the past is what we we'll still find. Follow him to the home, to the house, the same foolish thing he used to do in the new year, the same thing he used to do. The thing that used to cause quarrel conflict between him and the wife, between her and the husband, the same thing she is still doing, he's still doing. He has not learned that if we're going to build a home, if we're going to build a church, if we're going to build the kingdom with Christ, we need wisdom. The same old foolish thing, simple thing he used to do, that's what he's still doing. He is not praying. He may know verses of the Bible. He may quote verses of the Bible. He is not praying. Because if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it tells us, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. In Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4, reading from verse 5, walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. Live in wisdom. Act in wisdom. Not human wisdom. Not natural wisdom. Not ugly wisdom. Not native wisdom. Not neighbor's wisdom. Walk in wisdom. The supreme wisdom that comes from above. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. 
it says redeeming the time and then in verse 6 verse 6 tells us it says let your speech be always with grace seasoned or salt that she may know how ye ought to answer every man we need to possess that kind of wisdom possessing of his wisdom in our lives we're looking at this on the three subtitles number one begin with the wisdom of the lord for lifestyle number two beware of the wisdom of the lost with looseness number three behave in the wisdom of love with liberality we're looking at number one number one begin with the wisdom of the lord for a lifestyle as we are beginning a new level of living we must begin with the wisdom of the lord that is to have salvation wisdom unto salvation if you may come into the bible study and come into the services and you just hear and then you pray pray and pray but prayer that does not relate to salvation we must begin now to pray wisely so that we have the wisdom that leads source to salvation begin any project you are going to have begin with this kind of wisdom from above pray and let the lord lead you and guide you any step you are going to take any work you are going to do any kind of behavior you are going to have any new project you are going to have begin with the wisdom of the lord for a lifestyle and what's the wisdom of the lord in job chapter 28 reading from verse 28 job chapter 28 reading from verse 28 and unto man he said behold the fear of the lord is wisdom and to depart from evil understanding if you have not been born again begin with that and understand you need to depart from evil you need to repent of every evil every sin everything that can damn your soul everything that can make you miss heaven everything that will make you that will separate you from the lord you begin by repenting of them departing from all evil that is understanding and having the fear of god who is able to kill and able to drive the soul put the soul in hell jesus said i say unto you fear him we need to have the fear of the lord in our hearts and as we begin this new life we begin with this wisdom the wisdom that will help us see his face on the final day. We're looking at uh, Micah chapter 6, reading from verse 8. Micah chapter 6, reading from verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? He requires repentance. He requires that we stop and think about our lives and meditate on the way the path our lives have been going and see if there be any wicked way in you to turn away from that he has shown you oh man what is good and what does the lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly walk humbly walk humbly with thy god look at verse 9 in verse 9 the lord's voice voice cries unto the city and the man of wisdom shall see thy name the man of wisdom the woman of wisdom will be sober and will think and think through that i want to live my life from the beginning of this season and the beginning of the life ahead of me i want to live that in the wisdom of the lord it says the man the woman the person of wisdom shall see thy name and hear ye the rod and who has appointed it let's look at number two here number two is beware of the wisdom of the lost 
with looseness. There are people who are lost and they lose. Their lives are loose. Their language loose. Their behavior loose. Their character loose. They're lost and they live in looseness of life. Beware of the kind of wisdom those people have. In James chapter 3, reading from verse 14, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. In verse 15, it says, This wisdom descendeth not from above. The wisdom that makes a person to have hatred and malice, bitterness, this wisdom cometh not from above. The wisdom that makes a person lose, frivolous, sinful, evil, carnal, backsliding, that wisdom cometh not from above. This wisdom descended not from above. The, 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 the wisdom that makes a person to hide is real feeling. It's real condemnation. And then it's able to go through life smiling and jesting. And yet there's condemnation in the heart. And it's able to cover that up. You don't want to live in that kind of wisdom that prepares you for judgment, damnation, condemnation until the final day. And you're laughing your way to hell. It says that kind of wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly sensual, devilish, the wisdom that is able to pull men to yourself so that they can be defiled, that they can defile you, and you have the wisdom saying, no matter the spiritual life of that man, I'm able to, you know, use the wisdom you've gathered in the world and bring them to sin and lead them to hell, a kind of wisdom that's devilish, that's sensual, and that is earthly. The kind of wisdom that's able to treat teenagers and those teenagers are sucked in into the dungeon of immorality and evil. You know, they, they do it with their smile, with, you know, whatever they have and the sweet, sweet things they give. That wisdom is devilish. It says, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. I pray the Lord will protect us from all this kind of wisdom in the world in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three here. Number three, it says, behave in the wisdom of love with liberality. The wisdom that makes us to behave in love, in love towards believers, loving them as Christ has loved us. That's wisdom. But the kind of life or the kind of wisdom in quotes that makes us to find every reason out, outside the book why we should not love the believer as we love ourselves. The wisdom that makes people to give every excuse why they should not love uh, the, the fellow members and uh, even their neighbors. The wisdom that makes people, you know, bring all reasons and all the excuses why they should not love because they are so wise that they say, you know, if you love, if you love, if you love, even though Christ said, how can I do that. I have the wisdom. The wisdom that makes people to contradict Christ that they will not love. And they give all the reasons and excuses outside the book. Why they should not love. That's not wisdom. That's not wisdom. That's something that will destroy that soul because he contradicts Christ. But you behave in the wisdom of love from the Lord was liberality. It tells us in James chapter 3 verse 17. James chapter 3 verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, 
then gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Would you say in all honesty that you have prayed, you have received this kind of wisdom? Well, you need more. More challenges will come. More people will cross your way. You need more of this wisdom that is pure. Keeps you pure. Keeps other people pure. And everybody that relates with you, they are purer than before they met you. That's the wisdom of God, that your life makes people pure. Makes people purer than they were before they met you. The wisdom that makes you purer and purer and purer every day. That's wisdom. It says, this wisdom from above is first pure. That's the first thing to be noticed in the life of a person that has wisdom from above. First, you can notice that this woman, this man, this believer, this minister, this preacher, this pastor, he has wisdom today that keeps him pure, that keeps his ministry pure, that keeps everything that he does pure, and is purer than when we first knew him. That's wisdom from above. And then peaceable, peaceable, the wisdom that makes us to follow peace with all men. The wisdom that makes the husband to follow peace with the wife and the wife to follow peace with the husband. The wisdom that makes the head of the house pure and peaceable with all the people working with him, living with him in the house. The wisdom that makes you peaceable with your father-in-law and your mother-in-law. That makes you peaceable with everybody around and you say he's a man of peace. He is a preacher of peace. He is a possessor of peace. He is a pastor that has a peaceful heart and he shows that in his dealing with people he is not, you know, so, uh, uh, so kind of uh, boisterous and oppressive. He wants to oppress people. Wisdom, the wisdom of God makes us pure and peaceable. And then it says, gentle, gentle. We don't, uh, you know, behave in such an aggressive manner against anyone. You know, uh, people, innocent people or poor people or people you can easily intimidate. If you know, I can easily intimidate that person. You make sure you act in such a way that your action will not intimidate them or frighten them. You want to be gentle to everyone. That's the real wisdom. What's the use of the wisdom that makes the people fear you and run away from you and you intimidate everyone. Your language, your look and your posture intimidates everyone. That's not wisdom. You see, I know how to bring them on a subjection. That's not God. That's not God. That does not being gentle to all men. The wisdom we're praying about and the wisdom we want to preach in is the wisdom that makes us gentle and easy to be entreated. Not the fellow that says, I'll never forget give and no matter what they may beg from there, beg from there, who are you? Who do you make up of yourself? A tyrant? A Nebuchadnezzar? An herald? The person, God, you say God has forgiven you, I will never forgive them. It cancels your own forgiveness. The wisdom we have from above is the wisdom that makes us easy to be entreated and full of mercy. And you don't hinder other people from being merciful. There are those who feel that, you know, this fellow is too merciful, that fellow is too merciful, and they give, and they give, and they give, and then you find a kind of wisdom that will curtail them, a kind of wisdom that will cut them short, a kind of wisdom that will kind of uh, make them regret that they are being merciful. But the wisdom that comes from above is the one that looks at other people who are merciful and they say, Lord, I pray, give me that kind of wisdom that makes me to be full of mercy and of 
good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy. The Lord is calling us that we need more wisdom, more wisdom in our lives, in our lifestyle, in our behavior, in our interaction, in our families, in our companies, in our corporations, in the places where we work, that we have this wisdom from above. And it says, if any of us, you and I, if we lack wisdom, let's go and ask of the Lord who gives to all people liberally and he upbraideth not and it shall be given him and he says but let him ask in faith nothing wavering it shall be given to us I said it shall be given to us let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer now you know the wisdom we lack you know the wisdom we lack and you want to ask the Lord oh Lord I see this area I lack wisdom and I'm asking and I'm asking in faith and the first wisdom to ask for is the wisdom that makes so wise unto salvation not dodging salvation not dodging repentance not dodging, uh, seeking the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You want to make sure you have the wisdom that makes you wise unto salvation. Wisdom that leads to repentance. Wisdom that leads to faith in Christ. Wisdom that secures the witness of the Spirit that we are a child of God. Tell the Lord, transfer everything you've heard to the heart, to the heart, wisdom. Wisdom. And as it brings us to this level of wisdom, the wisdom for workmanship, isn't there a work he has given you to do in your personal life? If he gave the work, you need the wisdom for the workmanship. Giving you a family, that's work. Workmanship. How you build that family. How you raise that family. How you raise those children. How you build up those teenagers. Wisdom. Wisdom for workmanship. Beyond the natural wisdom that we have. Natural wisdom. Like my daddy just to demonstrate that's not enough native wisdom that my mom used to exhibit that's not enough neighbor's wisdom that I noticed by observation that's not enough you need the wisdom from God wisdom from above that makes you to live appropriately, adequately for what he has created you, wisdom. Tell him, if you are preaching, lower than the wisdom of your neighbors, You know, you don't have enough wisdom. You're a believer. You don't even have the wisdom to keep your wife, to keep your husband. You have not asked the Lord. You have not gone to the Lord to ask. You can't have the wisdom to keep the family together to forgive, to love, to be pure, and to keep the other one pure. 
They're laying all the blame on them. Why don't you come to God in prayer? And he'll give you the wisdom to work out every area of your life, starting from your family, to your profession, to the people that are walking along with you, in your company, your place of work, the wells of wisdom higher than the neighbor's wisdom. You hear of the people of the world, they're high, they're lifted up, they're lofty. But when you get near, you see that this area of their life is lacking in wisdom. So the Lord is saying, look beyond those neighbors and pray for the wisdom that has sanctification in it. The wisdom that fills your heart with Christ the sanctifier. The wisdom that excels the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon, so wise, he couldn't discipline the flesh. And he got 700 wives, 300 concubines. And he said, and my native wisdom so remained with me. He oppressed the people. And the people after his death came to the sun. Your father laid heavy burdens on us. The more gentle with us, and the son himself had no wisdom to be gentle with the people. Said, my father whips you with weaves, I weep you with scorpions. The young man did not have the, the wisdom to lead. You have wisdom to lead. Pastor, preacher, minister, leader, the wisdom to lead. The wisdom of self-control, self-discipline. He tested wine, women, worldliness. And he said, yet my wisdom remained with me. What kind of wisdom? That attracted the anger of God upon his life and yet was claiming my native, natural, earthly wisdom remained with me. You want to seek the Lord for the wisdom that is pure, the wisdom that is peaceable, the wisdom that is gentle, the wisdom that is easy to be entreated, the wisdom that is full of good fruits, the wisdom that is full of mercy, the wisdom that is free from partiality, the wisdom that is free from hypocrisy. If you ask, he will give you. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, he will open the door of his wisdom unto you. And in every area, that the Lord has given you to live. 
you will live in the wisdom from above. Wisdom in yourself, with yourself, to live wisely. Wisdom, not carnal wisdom, not wisdom to cover sin, wisdom to expose your sin to God and to be free from them. Not the wisdom of the philosophers. The wisdom of the people of the world. No. Great privilege, great calling to wisdom from above. That makes you free from the foolishness and the folly of the past years. Wisdom. That makes you beware of the wisdom of the world in their lostness, looseness, Wisdom that makes you to behave in love with liberality. Loving the brethren as Christ has loved you. Loving your neighbors as yourself. Love. Wisdom. Wisdom. Love, pure life, pure love, peaceable life, peaceable love, gentle life, gentle language. Easily pardoning life, pardoning love, easy to be entreated, easily forgiving, merciful, merciful love, merciful life, impartial, impartial life. Impartial love, sincere, unhypocritical love, sincere, unhypocritical love. If we ask, 